How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another Marvel Snap Zone video. My name is Savage Eddie and it is my job to bring you guys the Conquest meta tier list of the week for August 16th. And uh, not much has changed in this one. It's a very short list. Last week we had 11 decks on the list. This week we have eight of them. Last week, three tier one decks. This week we only have two, kind of just one, but there is two on here um last week we had three tier two we have three tier two again and we had five tier three decks we have three tier three decks this week as far as new decks that have entered the meta there isn't any all of these decks have been around not all of them in the list last week specifically new card stature and thanos control did not make the list last week but they've been around for a very long time you've seen these decks there's not much new here we have at the top of the list i was unsure about this deck last week because it was brand new we have move legion um lambie series actually won a tournament with this on saturday after the filming of the last video and since then the deck has just proven to be very solid um, we're going to talk about it more in a second next up it's followed by good card stature we've all seen this list it it led the meta for weeks um most of all of last month so it's back it's here we'll talk about why when we get to it followed by infinite she hulk that's up from tier three we have shuri saran that is down from tier one it was it was just barely in a tier one last week i didn't think last week it was going to stay there it didn't it's down to tier two um, followed by sarah control that is also dropped from tier one and then in tier three we have thanos control coming back into the list evolve lockjaw keeping its place at tier three and discard dracula dropping from tier two to tier three i think this is mainly because a lot of people were experimenting with dakin dakin um and a lot of people didn't know how to play against him in the first week people are getting the hang of it people are are playing against discard dracula a little bit better so dropping down the list once again and so let's talk about move legion this is the only deck that has a win rate of above 65 percent so it is really in like an S tier category. That's why I said earlier, there's only one real tier one deck. This move Legion is just miles better than anything in the meta right now. And that's due to it just having the most flexibility of any deck. You you have the ability to change your game plan as the, the, the game goes, even into the later turns, turn five and six, you can really switch up what you're doing. Your opponent can't really adapt or react to what you are doing. Shang-Chi is not effective against this deck in any way. Some decks have tried Professor X and Jean Grey to lock down a location or force this deck to play into one location, um, but those aren't as effective. Other decks like Surfer have tried Shadow King in there, um, but Surfer's not performing too well at the moment. It's not on the tier list. So again, not that effective. And so the only real strategy that works semi well against this deck is just to pick two lanes and go as tall as you can in those two lanes so we have like shuri sauron mr negative decks where you can dump a bunch on board you don't have to give away your game plan right away and towards the end you can just dump a bunch on two lanes pick two go as tall as you can in those lanes bounce is also somewhat effective and infinite she hulk which is also on this list is fairly effective because of its ability again to go tall in two lanes but outside of that, the flexibility of this deck, it has a reactive card with Shang-Chi, so it can handle some stuff. Legion, it can change locations into its favor. Um, and then the ability just to honestly jump around to wherever. It can keep buffing Angela. It doesn't have to ever fill the Angela lane because everything keeps moving around. It can get into lanes that are locked down with Jeff. It can ruin your game plans with Spider-Man and move things around you don't want in there. Miles Morales, Spider-Man as a 1-5 is just really strong. Legion, arguably the best five drop in the game at the moment. If he gets Vision out early, again, never committed to a lane, can move where it wants to, can buff the Kraven, can move somewhere you don't need to. Captain Marvel can just win the game in whatever lane that, that they didn't go into. It's arguably the most flexible deck that we've seen and for good reason it's at the top of the meta at the moment next up is good card stature and surprisingly some of you are actually complaining about this in the comments in the last few videos jeff is not in this list it's been replaced by spider ham and it's a pretty heavily reliant on zabu list there's a lot of four drops in this one 
And with the reliance on Zabu, a lot of players have been swapping out Stature and Black Bolt for America Chavez and Legion, just to for America Chavez to give more consistently and getting that Zabu out when you need it early. It's important to note that the removal of Jeff, um, Jeff used to be able to feed Craven in these move lists. So it's been removed, it's been replaced with Spider-Ham. So it's one less thing to buff your opponent's Craven. And this deck is really focused on just, again, going as tall as it can in two lanes to try to beat that move deck. You've seen this deck before. I'm not going to go over how it's played, but it is back. It made a return. It wasn't here last week. Um, so again, give it a try. Next up is Infinite She-Hulk. Uh, this list runs Leech instead of the Moon Girl package. I believe this is how it was run last week. This is the list that I've been running lately, and I've had a great time with it. I think last week I told you I was going to try this list out and see which one I like better. Moon Girl, that list is more fun because your ability to drop two She-Hulks and an Infinite on the last turn. But this list is more consistent and lets you be able to drop things if you suspect your opponent's going to drop a Legion to turn off your magic. And it has just felt better. It's felt like it had more tools. Um, the reason why Leech is in here is so when you drop magic on three or four, you can drop Leech on five and on turn six, ideally it will turn off your opponent's Legion or Scarlet Witch or whatever, whatever it is. Um, and they can't turn off that limbo. So you can safely skip that turn six and you can drop the Infinite and the She-Hulk on turn seven. Again, this deck is doing very well because it's ability to go tall in two lanes, which is very effective against specifically the move list that is out right now. I don't think it has a, a winning win rate against that list still, but this list definitely gives you the best chance against that one. Next up is Shuri Sauron. This is the same list that we've seen for a very long time. It's a very proactive, not reactive list. But again, with the move list at the top, this deck's ability to go very tall in two lanes is really effective. If you can get that red skull out and then copy it with Taskmaster, there's not much that move list can do. And overall, this deck kind of just forces your opponent to have the answer, to have the Shang-Chi. If you have the armor, it forces your opponent to guess correctly in the other two lanes. And so it's a strong deck in the sense that it's consistent at doing what it's trying to do, but it is much less flexible than the lists that we've seen lately. It's much less flexible than anything that has topped our top of the meta list in the last few weeks. And so while a solid deck, I don't think it's by any means the best. I've talked about this extensively in previous videos, so I'm not gonna talk about it too much longer. This deck has the ability to go very tall in two lanes, which is effective against the leader of the meta and the deck that uh, we are seeing all over the place. Next up, we have seen this list before, of course, Sarah Control. Compared to all the other decks this week, this deck I think is the most reactive. It has Shang-Chi, it has Enchantress, it has Killmonger, it has Scarlet Witch to control some location stuff. I think it's the most reactive deck that we have. It's more successful on ladder than it is in Conquest. However, it is still a strong deck and with a good pilot, it can do very strong in Conquest. It has a 57% win rate. And so again, it's really good. Nothing new, Sarah Control has been around for weeks. It's very strong. There's just minor changes that keep happening to adapt to the top deck in the meta. And this week it's the removal of Jeff from the list. And we're just gonna skim through the tier three list as we normally do. Thanos Control, we've seen lists like this before. Thanos Control is a very adaptive list. It can change with the meta. Um, this list is, is no exception. It's really trying to use Professor X to counter the move meta at the moment. But we've seen lists very similar to this with Thanos Control. If you can get that quick Professor X on turn four and then go tall or in another lane or use your reactive cards to get rid of their cards in the other lane, it's just a really strong deck with a strong foundation to work on. I don't think it's really gonna go anywhere. I think it's gonna stay one of the top Thanos decks, especially in Conquest. So Thanos Control. Then we have followed by Evolved Lockjaw. We've seen this once again before, no new changes here. Um, the idea, is to go as tall as you can in two lanes. Once again, a common theme this week. Same with discard Dracula. Once again, no reactive cards, just go as tall as you can in two lanes. Discard Dracula is a little susceptible to Lady Deathstrike, which there has been a good amount of experimenting with because it is a new card. 
But again, solid card. The tier three decks here, aside from Thanos Control, with Evolve Lockjaw and Discard Dracula, they're very proactive decks, not reactive. And again, they're just trying to go as tall as they can in two lanes. And so to wrap it up, this is so far the season for Move. Move finally has a very strong deck. It's a strong archetype now. It's fun to play. I am going to start getting annoyed because there is no way to really counter the deck at the moment. So hopefully in the next few weeks, some changes happen or some new decks come out uh, of nowhere that we can play with that, that are effective against the deck. But until then, Move Legion sits on top by a large margin. If you want more detail on the decks and the guides for these decks, and just more breakdown of why these decks are where they're at, go check out the, uh, the original article by Den. It does a great job, writes two of these articles a week. I'm just here to bring you guys the information and kind of bring it to video form, but please go check out his article. The link will be in the description. I also have my own YouTube channel where I do Marvel Snap stuff. I do bundle breakdowns. I do uh, deck videos, all things Marvel Snap. So go check me out. The link will also be in the description. And as usual, if you love all things Marvel Snap, make sure you like and subscribe, hit the bell. I'll see you in the next one.